Hey there, friend, and welcome back. My name is Sarah Rask, and today I've got my friend Ranveer on the phone, Zoom with me. Hello, how are you? Hello, Sarah. I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. So if you wouldn't mind, just to start off, could you tell me where you're from slash what your time zone is? I'm from Toronto, Canada. Um, I've been living in Toronto for over 15 years now. Um, I immigrated from India, so I was born and brought up back home in India. Oh, cool. um, I was about like 16, 17 when I got here. Oh, wow. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, so, um, and we're on the Eastern Standard Time Zone. Awesome. So you're with me. I love that. Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate that. You have no idea. Um, <laughs> how long have you known about Dr. Joe's work? I think it's been roughly over four to five years that I kind of dealt wow. into it. Yeah. Wow. I initially, I think it was more of, um, I was just watching like his YouTube videos and stuff. At that point, I'd just gotten into like personal development, spirituality. Um, so I was just, you know, open to exploring different, um, uh, you know, spiritual teachers or speakers and yeah. his work really spoke to me at the time. And I've stuck with him, you know, all these years. Nice. Yeah. They always say that if you find like one person, I don't want to necessarily say teacher, but a teacher or someone that, you know, you can vibe with, like stick mm -hmm. with them instead of having to go through about like 50 different ones. Cause there's so many different like facets of mm -hmm. this information. And sometimes it could get overwhelming and confusing, you know, but that's really cool. Four to five years. That's awesome. Yeah. And then sometimes like, even when you're listening to different people, they will all, they all have their own ideologies and sometimes yes. it's contradictory. Right. And it yep. leaves you in confusion as to like, okay, which concept should I kind of, you know, believe yeah. in or which one, like, right. So yeah, exactly. And it sometimes can get very overwhelming. I've had this happen when I first started diving into my spiritual like journey way back when, when I, I think I was in a freshman, I was a freshman in high school. When I first, okay. I read the secret when it first came oh, out in like 2000, we all did. Yeah. yeah. We all did. I read that. That was one of the first books I read when I moved here in Canada, that was in grade 11. We had uh, in our, um, our high school, Lima, they just it was it was a big big um you know talk of the town at the time yeah. at the time right I got when I remember when I first read it I got so excited about it and I wish I could like rekindle that spark because that's like the spark that Joe Dr. Joe talks about all the time like yeah. getting excited yeah. like I miss being able to get like that but from you know I'm going to be 30 in less than a month and it's like I've gotten so dulled down by life and my environment that yeah, I don't yeah. I it's so hard for me to, pr to produce that spark you know yeah and that spark is where you feel like you feel magnificent you feel yes. like you're you're manifesting things and it's so light there's no effort to it you know yeah. you just like you're just flowing like you know um and you're and that's precisely probably why the reason is that you are at so at ease with yourself with life the way the things are flowing that you, you just you are a, a magnet right you're a magnet yeah. for the miracles to happen and you're attracting all that because it, yeah. it's all effortless a hundred percent I even as recent as this past week I had a couple of things happen I am trying so hard to get abundance and I'm learning now it's not a try you just have to be and you just mm -hmm. have to walk into it and step into it and I owed a couple of people birthday presents. And I kept thinking to myself, I want to get them something really nice. I'm not the kind of person to just buy someone for the sake of buying it. Like I want to put thought into it, but my problem is it might take me like three months after their birthday to finally get it to them. <laughs> and I finally was able to save up enough money to get something for uh, two of my friends. And today I had a whole bunch of like things like in abundance, like influx come in. And I was like, oh, so this is how it works. I should have done this months ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you and you, at that point, you know, well, I'm not surprised, right? Like, because you know <laughs> the concepts of universe and you know, like how it operates and you're yes. like, oh, well, I, you know, that's kind of, you know, not a surprise, but it's, uh, yeah. you know, that's amazing. Yeah, it is pretty cool. So you went to, it's the progressive retreat, right? Uh -huh. Recently, I went to the Denver, Colorado yeah. um, a week, a weekend long retreat. Um, it's been about like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. Um, it was at the, the hotel Gaylord Resort in Denver. It's my first time in Denver. Um, it's a beautiful town, you know, all the Rockies and like yeah. you know, all the, the environment is great. Oh. So yeah, it was a great experience. There were about six thousand people from I think about forty-four different countries all around oh, the world. 6, Imagine 000? that. Oh my mm -hmm. god! Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I thought when the Marco Island, I think San Diego, we had roughly like 14 to like 16, like hundred people. I didn't realize that it was like over 2000. That's crazy. Yeah. This one is because I think they opened up the seats later on because there's so much demand, right? Everybody wants to get in there and, you know, kind of get a taste of the weekend long. So yeah, um, this was, yeah. And there, you know, it's amazing crowd. Like the energy was like, some other level it's amazing Um, right yeah it's amazing and it's just like you're there for the weekend and like you feel like wow you're vibrating at this like you know um at this different vibration different frequency all together because everybody is so open and so kind and so generous and loving and you know it's just like even the way they look at each other and like you know how everybody's like hugging and embracing each other with with you know with their flaws with their all the, you know all the things as raw as it gets right so and then you feel like wow wouldn't it be nice if the world was like that you know and- I know that's and imagine a week of that you know I feel yeah. like when we first get there we're a bunch of like dim lights and then we start interacting with one another and we kind of like turn each yeah. other on and then uh-huh. as you pass by the same person you're like oh my god hey it's you oh my god it's you like yeah. I have had maybe one or two interactions with a couple of people and they instantly became like really close friends of mine to the point where like people I had so many people share a lot of intimate stuff with me that they've never shared with their family members before because they felt like they could trust me and I was so beyond honored for that like, yeah, I had so many people you know I so agree with that and also same same things happened to me and like you know even yeah. for myself I've opened up to people I feel like because sometimes we open a you know more more to other strangers we you know because uh, because there's that you know there's no judgment there's no preconceived notions of how we should be acting and reacting and we're a clean slate and you know that's uh, and then if we see that energy is you know there there's that uh, sync between our energies you just open up that's that's the uh, you know a natural human inst- instinct like we don't want to be closed off we don't want to be like holding on to our secrets we don't want to be yeah. this is what i feel we always want to communicate we want to let other people know how we feel and you know how we would want things to be you know yeah so i think it just like there's more comfort there's more um, like there's no judgment at all and that allows others and yourself to open up about things that you're you know a lot of the times you know they're buried like you know uh, in this deepest corners of you know your heart or you know your your mind and that's it's like a therapy right it's just yeah. like therapy there's like you know years ago when I was introduced to therapy you know, I had no clue why, you know, people go to therapy and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and you go to therapy, you go to a therapist, like, you know, provided they understand you, they provide you the env- right environment and, you know, yeah. for you, allow you to open, open up. You are just like, most of the time it's you talking, right? It would be like, you're opening up, you're talking about your experiences, <laughs> you, you know, the things you've faced in life and all that. Mm-hmm. So they are just nodding their head or they're just giving you like they're directing you to in certain um, directions, you know, to feel certain emotions and stuff. But most of the time it's you talking and you just listening to yourself talking and getting those things that you had put the back burner and actually bringing them up, whether that's childhood trauma, childhood, you know, experiences we've had, things that, you know, any shame that we've felt, any insult and all that, right? And you bring it to the forefront, you're like, yeah. oh, I was, I had this inside of me. Like you surprise yourself, right? <laughs> well, it's yeah. just like that. It's like the the medita- the retreats, it's just like that. Like you open up and you learn so much about yourself. You really do. And it's, it's so true because we, we tend to talk and we hear ourselves and we, the answers have always been inside of us the entire time. It's Mm -hmm. just, we think that it requires somebody else, some book, some crystals, some tarot cards, some astrology chart to kind of like, you know, say, Hey, this is what's wrong with you. And this is why, Mm -hmm. when really it's just a matter of being able to sit with yourself and say, well, I'm not willing to tolerate this energy anymore. I'm calling back those thoughts. Let me start creating my own life. And I'm going to keep showing up in a way that allows this life to come through you know when dr joe says like you have to be in the vibration of what it is that you want you can't you can't be a whiny individual saying why isn't this happening to me i'm usually that whiny individual because it's not going to want to show up you know yeah it's yeah. The same and you have to of course and you have to like bring yourself back into that vibration because it's evident like if you're new to this you will like 
be in that zone and then yeah. you, you know you get out of that zone whether that's any distractions in your in your life day-to-day things that happens or people that you're with or like how you respond to the environment and how the environment responds yes. to you that will bring you out of that zone a lot of the time so the practice yeah. is to be disciplined right to have that self-discipline to bring yourself back in and how can you do that when you're self-aware when you know you've got you know you've gone the wrong path when you when you know you know you need to bring yourself back into that zone where you're actually believing in that right and then when you believe in that that's when the magic happens yeah getting being able to get triggered and then slow down not slow down but shorten that period where you react Mm -hmm. and then going back into coherence that is totally the key how long Mm -hmm. are you going to react for how long are you going to be upset for how quick can you get back to that flowy natural state so that way you can stop blocking everything else out that's the key it's amazing and how it starts like you know sometimes when you know you know people are pushing your buttons like you have to realize you know that there you have those buttons that people can press and push and trigger Uh, you in a way right yeah so how about you just get rid of those how about like you don't have any you're so um comfortable with who you are that you feel that you're enough you're love you're this you know miracle and you know that nobody can offend you when you understand that why people are behaving or you know accusing you or anything you know a certain way it's because of them what they have inside of their heads and how what they the experiences that they've gone through and the understanding that they have of life you know Um, otherwise a happy person positive person you know who believes in you know the higher powers like they will not make you feel less than anything right like they will just empower you like you know as at the retreats what do you see like uh, you know even at Joe Dispenza's retreats like you see people empowering each other they're like you know if somebody's going through those emotions people are like you know helping them out go through that and you know be on the other side of you know that and people were dancing on the you know just yeah. after the yeah after the, the the lunch breaks or the coffee breaks that we had like yep. everybody would come at the front and they would just dance and this rhythm it's like there's this flow there's this energy right because <laughs> we're letting you're letting it I'm just I'm dancing while I'm talking about it but <laughs> see like it's so easy to get into that zone right yeah, it totally is. I usually would get uh, jugged to the front because I hate dancing. And I, my friend Al just, he made me the last day. He's like, you're getting your butt up here. And I'm like, oh, but yeah, no, this time when I go to Marco Island, maybe we'll see. <laughs> uh, awesome. So now what made you want to go to the progressive retreat instead of um, a week long? I think um, the obvious, I mean, response to that would be, I wanted to give that a a shot and see like what the energy is going to be like, how it's, you know, going to kind of pan out. And I was never, you know, in a crowd of, you know, people that's like, you know, that big. And I wanted to get a taste of it and also learn more about like, because I was practicing meditations on my own, but I felt like um, just going for a weekend long, is just the right amount of time for you to like get into that headspace but mm-hmm. also like learn more about the meditations because he was walking us through the meditations yeah. whether that, you know um the chakra meditation or you know uh, other uh, visualizations so we actually get go through that and you kind of get yourself back on track as to like you know okay this is how I'm going to like you basically get into self-discipline right so ever since I've come back I haven't missed like a single day of meditation like I meditate you know before going to bed and I'm like I'm so proud of myself I'm like wow Yay. like you know keeping it up and yeah. once you keep the momentum going then in itself it becomes a motivation that you know yes. you've done it so well till now like why not just another just one more meditation yeah. I think when you approach it from that way it's helped me a lot when you think of when you don't think of I have to meditate for a month let's say you say like I just have to meditate for today like you know for me to like you know feel better feel at peace and there's there's you just immerse yourself in it and when you go through that experience it just like it will motivate you be like oh wow imagine like you know sometimes some days when you're tired you don't want to you know go sit for a half an hour 45 minutes yeah when you do it anyways right that's when joe dr joe talks about like you you're going to feel those you know times when you're not going to want to feel to get you know get up and go for meditations and sit on that mat but if you do it anyways that's when you're basically saying i'm changing my you know my 
like my chemistry, my brain waves. I'm I'm actually taking. <laughs> I'm actually like picking myself and like you know dragging myself to that state where you there's pure bliss and peace and you know. Yeah, you're overcoming yourself. That's mm-hmm. I've been getting up at. 4 40 4 44 in the morning for the past like week and a half now and I had it today where I was awake at 4 44 and I was like I brought my computer I was so tired because my my days have been nuts lately and I work with horses so I'm outside and it was hot yesterday I rode my horse for a couple of hours I you know taught a couple of lessons and stuff so and I didn't get home and done with my work until one o'clock in the morning and yet I still woke up at 4 44 well knowing that I also had a busy day today. And I meditated for an hour in my bed. I had my computer ready and I'm like, you know what? I'm still showing up, but like, I have to half-ass show up today because I'm so tired and it's okay. If I go in and out of consciousness, I will forgive myself. I'm still here. I'm still making the effort. Sometimes you have to like improvise. You can still Mm -hmm. show up, but sometimes you might need to tweak it, you know? For sure. And then there's, that's why, like, even when I'm doing uh, the meditation, sometimes like Dr. Joe's meditations are there an hour and a half or you know an hour long then there's like you know some days when I'm like oh I actually you know don't have that much time or I'm feeling yeah. super tired but I do want to you know put in the effort I do want to show up then you know I go for a half an hour right so yeah that's when you have to be flexible otherwise you're going to like you know uh you go you're going to get into like self guilt about like oh you you wanted to do it but you didn't keep your promise and all that right so I I feel like yeah there's definitely I 100% agree with you that you have to have the flexibility to like you know adjust and you know yeah that guilt is real especially because I've been documenting it too because I want to kind of keep with it for about a month to say like I was able to get up early to do it but I think from just how much I've been going the past couple of days, I might say, Hey, maybe eight o'clock. Cause I meditate for two hours in the morning. Like it goes from five to seven mm-hmm. and then I start my day or I go back to bed. Cause I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> and that guilt we're talking about, it's all we're, we're using these words, these words, right. Because they're, you know, everybody knows about it, but the, the thing that speaks about these words is the energy, right? That goes mm-hmm. with it. So like when yes. you're feeling guilt, what are you feeling? You're feeling low vibration energy. You're feeling, um, you know, you're not believing in, you know, the miracles. You're feeling yeah. that, you know, that you're vibrating at that frequency where you cannot expect to, you know, attract yeah. miracles, right? So 100%. you want to get rid of all those feelings that makes you feel that way. And you want to be in a state where, you know, your joy is like your, your, your frequency, you are at ease with yourself, you know, you, you love yourself, that's being at ease with yourself, you know, you forgive yourself, you know, you forgive yourself, we go wrong, we're human, you know, we go through human, yeah. um, you know, uh, motions of life, and you forgive yourself, like, you know, that's also important, you know, being yeah. your own friend, self love, all that, the good stuff. Oh, 100%. Crucial. Exactly. It's the same thing with this channel. Like it's called, Hey there friend, because I'm, you know, the friend that I always yeah. needed growing up who talks about all these weird out there things. And I'm bringing friends like you yeah. on to talk about your experiences and to be like, Hey, like you're not alone. We're all going through this together. You yeah. know, how can we support one another through listening, having conversations? Like you had said before, we usually can figure ourselves out. It's just a matter of mm-hmm. being able to hash it out. My mom saw a therapist for about a year mm-hmm. and this was when I was starting to get into the the Dr. Joe stuff, like hardcore. And my mom would relay all of that information to him. And my mom's therapy sessions turned into my mom telling him all about the Dr. Joe stuff that I was doing and not about like what was, what she was going through. So she had to eventually kind of do away with him because it was like, dude, (laughs) (laughs) it's just like, like she was being the therapist there <laughs> she's like my daughter's doing a, a pretty decent job at this I don't need him anymore I'm like, that's not really the point but okay <laughs> that's amazing yeah I mean that that's again like you know like you just uh you just said like you know you being your own friend and you yeah. being there there for yourself and like you know also like you know I keep telling myself like I I feel like I have this adult version and there's just child version and mm-hmm. having gone through therapy we may you not know, talked a lot of you know with my therapist about this where you will kind of I will say things what the, the child version would have felt and you know mm-hmm. what when that person when that child gets triggered on you know on certain uh, trigger points and stuff and how we can analyze that and how we can yes. calm that 
child down you know calm down yes. like you know feel that I'm there for you like you know I got your back and you yes. remember when you felt a way like when you were a kid you felt certain things um yes. that's because you know you didn't know any better right yep. like now you know better we act better you know now you we we have more ex- we've had more experiences we have more self-awareness and we have you know uh, those like that t- those toolkits for us to like yes you know, through those ex- yes right? Yep. You took the words right out of my mouth is the tools, because I had that growing up in my environment. I didn't have the tools to be able to communicate. So I, another thing too, is being made to feel wrong. It was, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't stick the knife, the knife in the socket. Like, what are you stupid? It's like, no, I'm young. I don't know what happens when I do that. Like, so instead of having it explained, you get told, no, I was listening to a a lecture by Dr. Joe, where he talks about you know, one-year-olds and how they have the mirror neurons. Like, you know, when you're feeding a baby, mm. you open the mirror mouth and you're like, ah, yeah. and you try yeah. to, they, they mimic you. Yeah. So then they also start walking around and doing things and you tell them, no, don't do this. No, don't do that. No, no, no. And then they turn two and it's called the terrible twos. Cause all they say is, you know, well, put your shoes on. They're like, no, no, no. Yeah. Cause yeah. what have they heard for the past year? The word no. Yeah. So and those mirror, mirror neurons, of, you know, Yeah. So like, of course we have, we're feeling a type of way, like, of course my younger self and and my adult self. Now I have dealt with a lot of things because it's like, I was, you know, made to feel wrong and stupid because I didn't understand. And it took me literally until like last year or the year before to understand that I can ask questions and say, Hey, I'm not quite understanding this. Could you explain it in a different way? And Mm -hmm. if somebody gets frustrated with me on that, that's not my fault that's on them and the way that they react to it. And they just might not be, you know, a good teacher for me because I don't understand their teaching method, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's just like our society, like how it says there's one formula for everything, right? Like one formula, like one way of living life, right? Yes. When even me, when I was growing up back home in India, there's like this, like one way that you can either even professional wise you can either be a doctor or a lawyer you know yeah. uh, otherwise the rest of it's like oh you're not yeah. intelligent enough mm-hmm. well even otherwise like you have to like you at certain age you have to get married you have to have a certain number of kids and like you know all the things and and then when I got here I see and I love traveling all around the world yeah. so I see I like that. explore these different countries and yeah. I love talking to people and learning about their experiences and that's when you learn mm-hmm. like when you go travel you learn like no there's no one way of living like no. you know some people you know wow. live their whole life you know just like they don't have a house they you know basically yeah. there's like I was visiting Amsterdam once and there were like these people they were just living on in their boats like you know um yeah wow. and that, that, that's all that that's all they had and like they were happy and some people oh. just like I heard a lot of people they retired and they would just like go on these long year-long six-month-long cruises and they like that's what they loved it right so then you then you come back and you're like you challenge those beliefs that you learned over the years be like oh what but I will this is the expectation of me and then you're like no I need I can challenge it yes challenge it then you're like wow it's exciting like you know I can break this mold of like what I've learned and like I can be a different person and you know which who's more free and you know authentic and doesn't have to abide by you know these um, preset rules um, you know that were that are expected of us so um, that's yeah that's just how oh my god I love that I I really hope especially because you said you love to travel one of these days I am going to be traveling all over as well like I want to be a motivational speaker and go to all these different countries and speak I can see you going to all these countries and having interviews with all of these different people and making your own YouTube channel or podcast or something. Cause you, awesome. you're very insightful. And I, I'm, I'm loving this conversation so much. Like it's so like, I've never met you before. And this is yeah. just, it's such a great conversation and you're so authentic and genuine and you have such a big heart. And I, I can see you having these interviews with these people and like, talking to them about their culture and the stuff that they do and how it's not of the norm and not like the nine to five society like they're happy yeah not being in that and that's all that matters right being in a happy state you know yeah it's just that's just when you feel light and when you feel the abundance you know coming to you and you're just that's the intent of life that you know it's not to like you know 
work hard and like, you know, just be miserable your whole life so you can perhaps enjoy after your retirements, like, you know, perhaps like go travel all around the world and meet different people and have those no. experiences. Like why wait for it? Like yes. why not just, you know, and, you know, go into it full force right now, right? When you still yeah. have the time, you're still young and you can, you know, go travel and meet different people, experiences, all that. So, yeah. And that's going to shape up the person that you are. And, 100%. And also you're not doing any service, just like not, you know, expressing yourself. Like, you know, you have, I think we all have gifts, right? You have your own we gifts here and you're, you know, you're expressing yourself in a wonderful way, right? Talking yeah. to different people, collecting those experiences and, um, you know, allowing other people who are watching, like, you know, your videos to, um, you know, learn something out of it and yeah. apply, apply, you know, few tidbits in their own life. And, you know, so that's, that's, that should be the goal of it, right? So like, yeah. we're, we're not benefiting ourselves or anybody else, like mm -hmm. keeping those gifts hidden. Um, we need to go out there and show up and, you know, and sometimes you have to like show up messy, like you don't yes. have to be perfect. It's okay, <laughs> we're humans. Like yes. sometimes you have to like, you know you're called to, you know to to show up messy so like people can learn from that like people can learn yes. from what you've done wrong and how yes. you you know make things work and all that yes. so it's not always like the perfect facade that we were just no. talking about earlier like how you know you know on, in so on social media like everybody's yes. putting their brave front and everything the perfect mm -hmm. picture of how they're handling themselves so well and how relationships are and how they love mm -hmm. each other so much but we don't know the behind the scenes right so yeah. for us to like show up as who we are we're gonna have ups and downs and as long as we're authentic and sometimes that's you know yeah can be messy but that's when you learn you know that skill set of like you know how do you pick yourself up when you're you know in in, in, in times of difficulty and yes. you know, how you can lift each other up and that yes and that's what people, I get emails constantly from people saying that they, what they love so much about how I show up is how authentic I am. Like I don't put makeup on most days. I'm like barely dressed, but like, this is the pure thing. Like I am just like you, I'm not some like supermodel or whatever. Like yeah. I'm, I, I'm human. Yeah. And, you have good days. You have bad days and yes. but you still show up and that's, exactly. that's, you know, that's, that's, you being, you know, a role model for those people who can like be like, if she can do it, why can I do it? Right. A hundred percent. And that's one of my favorite sayings. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. I am no different and no special than anybody on this planet. It's just a matter of tuning into that vibration and not giving up when things get difficult, you know? Yeah you got to keep going. <laughs> yeah. It's, I think for most people, it's the fear of judgment, right? We, yeah. it's just an innate thing that we've learned or maybe, or maybe we've learned from the society in general, how, you know, with social media and stuff that we have oh, to be yes. perfect and we are expected 100%. to be a certain way. We have to be so well put together and, you yeah. know, um, no. <laughs> and that's just, and then when people themselves, they are not, or not in that state they, they fear that judgment right like what if, yeah what if, like, you know I get that um, all the time with these videos like it, because it's not polished because I have no music yeah. because it's not flashy it's yeah. so hard trying to keep people's attentions because freaking TikTok like yeah. you get a yeah. like a 30 second video you swipe up you forget what you just watched yeah. so people on YouTube sometimes don't even stand a chance because like you know they're longer videos but at the same time we are getting the people who want to start breaking out Ex of that exactly. and it's going to start crumbling very soon where you you know, attention spans are going to start to come back again. And we just have to keep being that stronger yeah. vibration, that stronger energy to get it back. Yeah. And it's a different type of audience, right? And then the right yeah. type of audience that yeah. you are, you know, catering to will actually find the time and effort oh, yeah. and the effort to show up and, you know, be there as a community because they know, like, you know, that's yeah. how we're going to bring this change of like, you know, exactly. coming together and sharing our gifts and, you know, being more self-aware so that, yeah. that that's how it is and that's at the, the retreat too right so like why do you feel <laughs> that love and you know um, the joy and like you know just mm -hmm. that you know compassion and everything all of that because the, like all those people are they're basically vibrating at that frequency and they all believe in that you know in the universe like you know universal love of like manifestation miracles that they believe 100%. that it's possible when yes. you believe that's possible you've already crossed that you know initial hurdle of like where you're 
questioning yourself like is it true is it not <laughs> when, when you're 100% into it and you're like of course it is true yeah. like what do you mean it's not right All in, exactly. but there's no doubt yeah and yeah. then then you and then you are like sometimes things are working for you you're like it's a miracle and sometimes it doesn't <laughs> be like it's still a miracle because it yeah. was meant to be that way and it, it was I, you also know Janine she's you yes. know a mutual friend she's <laughs> awesome um so she and I were just talking earlier this morning so the Niagara Falls uh, weekend a week-long retreat just opened up today yes. actually um on, on 30th of June um so she she was lucky enough to you know sign up for it and stuff yeah, and I was just does. talking to her I was like oh I I logged in and you know I kind of fill the initial um, questionnaire and stuff and I reached out for the next page and it was sold out right <gasps> and it, it was sold out within like like a couple hours yeah. like hours is a long long time but mm, I don't know when it was sold out probably within an hour or so right but but what I was saying was like you know that didn't happen right and for me it's like you know what my immediate I was bummed like not to get in but I'm, yeah. then I'm like I was able to bring myself back as to like oh there's a reason as to like why this is maybe this is not the right time this is not mm-hmm. the right time you know for me personally or maybe it'll happen maybe I'm on the waiting list and you know yeah. it'll just show up and stuff so that's what I'm saying like in life sometimes when you're even when you're believing in this like some things will happen you know that that you perceive it to be in your favor and others that you don't but at the end of end of it all you have to like be at peace with it that everything that's happening is happening for you the universe is not going to uh, you know give you anything that you know is is not in your favor right it it, it wants you to grow and evolve as a person and sometimes you need challenges and difficulties in life for you to be that person for you to be tough and strong and you know able to handle your emotions because if you're going to be that person only then you can help others out right so yes. having you having gone through that journey then you know what when that other person shows up and asks for help from you then you know what that person is going through yeah. and then how you've handled yourself and how you've kind of gone through the journey and you can teach that person the same thing right so sometimes you have to go through certain lessons in life for you to like get a good grasp of like you know okay yeah. how to handle it right Exactly. The universe is not conspiring against you. It's conspiring with you. Everything Mm -hmm. always happens in your favor. And it's just a matter of respecting and understanding that and not reacting when, you know, you have an upset. Like there's always something better. (laughs) Yeah, of course. And then the other thing that Dr. Joe also talked about us telling us a story, right? We have a story in our head that we Mm -hmm. keep telling ourselves, like, you are this, you are that, you're, you know, whether, whether that's positive or negative, but we keep repeating the same story in our head. So if we want reality to change if we want different things to be manifested we have to tweak that story we have to change that story and be a different person you have to be a different person than who you are because otherwise you're going to keep attracting the same experiences same um, you know things in life because you're the same person you basically do the same things same mundane things every day you get up you get up you brush your teeth the same way you know you have a glass of water uh, you know same time you go to work and like same patterns and everything so you basically not you know exciting a different set of neurons right you're basically going through the same uh, neural pathways and you know just keep getting same results and you know and then you shouldn't be surprised why you keep you know attracting the same you know negative people or same negative experiences in life because yeah you haven't put in the effort to be a different person and that that's when you, when you get into meditation it allows you that opportunity to be that you know different person to get rid of you know your limited beliefs and you know vibrate at a frequency where you actually are becoming more familiar with how it feels to be on in that abundant energy and then when you you know go about your routines uh, you know daily things in life you can actually you have the self awareness as to like remember what i felt during the meditation can i try my bring myself into the same mental state where yeah. you know even even that be for a minute or two or like actually experience that yeah. so you're basically feeding that emotion right feeding those um, neurons and to make certain pathways and once they get strong enough then you're like you know you 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 kind of on that path of like you know abundant um, thinking and you know yeah. attracting miracles 
Exactly. Yeah. So through your time at the retreat for, for while, while you were there, did you have any profound aha moments where like things started to click, especially because you've known about his work for like, you know, quite, quite some time. Mm -hmm. Did you have any concepts that you were like, Oh, I get that now. Mm -hmm. And it, it definitely is because, like I said, we were doing meditations or different types of meditations and right. some people, uh, you know, preferred one over the others. But like having gone through a different kind of like tools, mm -hmm. um, you know, it just you're in that energy and everything at that point feels like a miracle. Like, yeah. you know, a person showing up to you, you know, um, just the right time. A lot of things have happened. Be like, oh, you we were just looking for something and that person just shows up <laughs> to you with that thing and you're like wow okay um and then so I think because we're you're in that energy it's mm -hmm. just it's just um the universe just keeps delivering right and just the universe try to make you understand that you know it actually works and that just so like being there in person I feel like it just like your faith um is even more stronger now because mm -hmm. you've experienced it firsthand um like what the you know, the power that, you know, we, our mind holds or like what, how we can shape up our reality. And there were different speakers too, right? So, yeah. you know, who cured themselves basically, basically of like diagnosed illnesses and uh, yeah. all that. So, which was profound, like, you know, people just going through those experiences and talking about how, like their before and after and throughout, right? Like mm -hmm. the journey and how that's, just change the whole game altogether it just makes you believe you listen you're listening to them and you're just rooting for them like <laughs> come on you did a wonderful job yes. and that just you know it just helps think that concept in, inside of you even stronger be like oh it's actually possible so and when you're that in in that energy this just you just keep attracting you know yeah. you keep manifesting you know things show up there's that ease in life and you know you're just at peace and you're and that's that experience is you just like you want to hold on to that you just don't want to get out of it like when you're we were even just during the the lunch breaks right we, we used to have a um, meditation just before we go for lunch break and mm -hmm. I remember like this one day I was like I'm starving right now I wish I could go for lunch before the meditation and stuff and you get into meditation you go so deep and mm -hmm. you get up and like uh, the doctor, like, so the doctor said, uh, Dr. Joe said, like, go, um, you know, you, you can have your lunch break now. And he, I, I got up and I was just seeing those people. Everybody was so peace. There's like, there was a big, big lineup, like, you know, hundreds of people like uh, in the lunch lineup. And I was like, oh, some, you can go ahead. You, you know, I'm not hungry. I'm, I feel so at peace, you know, oh, wow. that, so I think that just like how, yeah, I'm just kind of rambling on. <laughs> it's all good. So you, <laughs> you, you found a, a deeper sense of self peace and self discovery mm -hmm. while being at the retreats. That that's kind that's of one of the biggest uh, like yeah. takeaways yeah. that you can take from yeah. from your yeah. experience. And what a, a, the other thing that I've learned is like you gotta show up. You know, oh, you have yeah. to show up. You have to show up in the game. You know, yeah, every day, every day. Like you know, absolutely. That's something that I kind of took back. It'd be like yeah you need to have discipline like if you want greater things in life mm -hmm. you have to have the discipline to actually put in the effort you know if you want to be of any service to this world you have to put in the effort you have to show as you know um, your authentic version and you know if you want to be that energy worker for others yeah, um, absolutely. you have to you know you have to put in the work yourself first for you to be in yeah. that energy space where you can actually, where you're actually in a position to help others. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know that it's obviously the the progressive retreat is a lot different than a week long because with a week long, we come up against a lot of, you know, stuff ab mm -hmm. about ourselves and then we come home and then we still keep coming up against ourselves. Since you've been back from, you know, the weekend little mini mm -hmm. retreat, have you come up against any challenges that you thought you kind of had under control while you were at the retreat, but you know, it kind of triggered you a little bit being back home in you know, like your, your environment, your everyday environment. 
um things happen i mean i like i am pretty like a like pretty disciplined right when it comes to like when i set in my intentions right then i stick to it nice. um so i've been meditating every day and trying to keep myself in that um head space where you know i am actually not letting a lot of things mm-hmm. to trigger me but yeah of course when you show up in life you know every day same trigger same environment like you get you can get it's easy to get out of the zone sometimes i do but i i think the key that i found is like having that background right now like having gone through the retreats and like having those tools i i'm more self aware you know even mm-hmm. when i go off track i am like okay i wasn't supposed to be that way and i can act better and i can even with myself like i can be more compassionate you know i can oh, I you know that. yeah love myself unconditionally cuz sometimes you're like you putting conditions on yourself because yes. growing up you 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 thought that was the right thing to do yeah. but so like you know even the guilt like we were just talking about earlier so those things yes you go you know you you go off track but like it's always like it's so easy to be nice with, with like 6000 people when they're all loving and kind of and just course. like smiling and embracing yes. you and you know <laughs> but then then those 6000 people go you know or all around the world and like yes. hopefully we can you know make some other people aware of this whole you know concept and like yeah. get into meditation and being self aware and all that so the challenge of course there's going to be challenges you know undoubtedly because like i said the energy is going to be different your environment is going to be different um you have to be self motivating like you have to like motivate yourself you're not going to you're not going to always have people um around you yeah. who can you know be your support yep. system not everybody is going to believe in it first of all right yes. so so <laughs> yeah so those challenges are going to show up but i i think at the end of the day you know if you keep putting in the effort mm-hmm. it's well worth like you know the time that you spent on you know being self aware and figuring out things and, yeah um, and then you will have i've had people like just reaching out to me randomly be like you know about their problems in life and then i mm-hmm. take that as an opportunity as to like okay how can be of service to this person like yes. from my experiences or even going through the retreat you know having having met people and just having met people you know on wheelchairs and they showing up at the retreat and you know yeah. you feel like you know the commitment they had right like they want they believed in it so much that they think it's possible right to, to live an abundant life and and then you the universe is going to keep delivering you those opportunities you know that you have to you, you just have to show up and you be like <laughs> i'm going to you know give you my best as to like how you should approach this or like why this is happening to you but at the end of the day you have to decide for yourself and you have to take that you know step to like be self being self aware and not letting other people's situations affect you because yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and also doing what you can with what you got from where you are, because it is, I'm one of those people that I will give and give and give and give until I've got nothing left to give of myself. Mm -hmm. And I, my, my friend Julie yelled at me the other day. She's like, you need to be selfish for like a change. Cause I'm constantly Mm -hmm. like, you know, trying to make sure I'm in the right place at the right time for people. So I'm not holding them up or anything, but I was, I was hungry and I wanted to go run and go get something to eat super quickly before Um, another lesson came and I had about like 40 minutes. So I like, I looked on my phone. I was like, all right, it will take me 20 minutes to get there. Another like eight to order what I want. And then another 20 to drive back to the barn. And she was like, be selfish for a change and go. And I'm so happy I did because the person was like 10 minutes late anyway. So it totally worked out, but it's so hard being able to put yourself first, especially in our hustle culture and society where you've got to support your family. You've got to support, you support yourself, but support yourself in a way that you have to live, not in a way that's loving. Like I always say, I work, I have a sick work ethic where I work myself until I'm sick. And I I do it to myself with this stuff too. Like last night I was up until two o'clock in the morning, like editing, you know, the podcast that I work for editing all the the videos and stuff. So I can be able to get that much closer to my dreams. And yet, like, when will I have the time to sit and read a book? Like, I don't know. I don't know when that moment's going to come for me because I don't have this self-love discipline that I know that I need to work towards. And that's the, 
and that's something that we need to like you know counsel ourselves on as to yes. like we have to learn that skill right to be compassionate like we're yeah. you know especially like you know people who are listening to this like they believe in kindness compassion yeah. like we're compassionate and you know kind and loving towards others but what about us like you just said right like why yeah. why do we you know not give that same compassion love kindness to ourselves like yeah. we deserve it right yeah, and not in an egotistical way either. Of like not course. making it, I can still give of myself to others. I can still love others unconditionally. But like like they say, when the if the plane's going down, like you've got to put your own oxygen mask on before yeah. you can help anybody else. I can't yeah. pour from an empty glass. Yeah, of course. And the, once you've got your your mask, then you can you're in a position to better yes. help others, right? Exactly. To save other lives. And uh, yeah. so that's super important. I mean, that should be a priority. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have any favorite Dr. Joe quotes or favorite Dr. Joe sayings? Like I, I like when, uh, where you place your attention is where you place your energy or when he's like the space in space, course, like all those it. stupid like, things. Everybody <laughs> loves that. Everybody loves that. Like, you know, the, the, the sound he makes when he go does that med- meditation, right? The visualization. Yes. Um, I think for me, it's more like, if you want to attract a different reality, you have to be a different person, you know, like you that. have to, you have yeah. to, like, if you want things to work out, mm-hmm. you have to be a person who is actually in alignment with that frequency, right? So yeah. every time you, there's, there's usually a gap between like your desires and like how you feel right now. So you basically have to match your frequency with those desires and then, you know, yeah. you're in sync. So that's, I think, I think I I totally believe in that. That's awesome. Have you had any mystical moments? Did you have any mystical moments while you were at the retreat or since you've been back home? Mm -hmm. I think his guided meditations on the chakra, like the seven chakras meditation, when he actually walks you through like visually, like, you know, from the base chakra to like, you know, pull the energy up and up and up to your, like, you know, other chakras and sacral and throat, heart chakra and like, your throat chakra and like you know your crown chakra it's just like for me it was like profound it's like just white Uh, light pouring on me and I was just feeling so much at ease and (laughs) just feel it felt like I'm it was I literally felt like I'm a different person altogether Mm. that's like you leaving your body and you're like I don't know that person is I don't know you know who my relatives are who my friends are like I don't know what my name is like I do, just don't <laughs> identify with any of those. I'm yeah. just like a soul, you know? Yeah, no one, no thing, nowhere, no time. Yeah, and that that was profound. And I've had like, I had those, you know, moments um, at the retreat. And even, you know, even when I'm doing meditations on my own, I have right. those, you know, quite often. So that was, that was really profound. It's just like white light pouring on you. You're just feeling so at ease and there's nothing that you would want. You're nothing, anything, you don't want anything, um, you know, f- from life. You're just flowing with it. You're just being a part of it, like just pure consciousness. Yeah. And it's so funny because I'm, I'm looking at you obviously on your screen and your, your camera keeps changing. Um, the color keeps changing and it's just, you're getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Cause you're, you're on all white. You've got a black, uh, white, background you're wearing white and you're right in front of the window so it's just it's really funny how you were talking about that yeah so imagine that like just (laughs) happening in your head like you're getting brighter and brighter and brighter and just like wow it's just so lighter and there's so much flow to it I love the the visual that you're giving us right now is so on point right now right here (laughs) so would you say that you totally would recommend going to a progressive retreat if someone had the opportunity for sure definitely i know it it can be you know difficult to get get into those retreats yeah. because there's limited like seats and you just have to like basically sign up within like you know a couple hours of them opening these retreats but yeah. it was so well worth it like for you to like surround yourself with people yes. and also like so once jo- Dr. Joe explains the concepts, he would allow us to like talk to our peers, like or people sitting beside us to actually Turn to discuss the person those- next to you and share. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like share what you got out of it. And then that was even that I think was so valuable because you actually learning from him and actually translating it yourself in you know how you perceive it to be to other person and making them understand them talking to you about it. It's just like sinks in even better because now you have 
learned something and you practice it you've delivered it right you have um so that that was super helpful as well you know just discussing it and stuff so definitely i would definitely recommend if you can get your hands on it don't even think yeah. about it twice yeah. just totally yeah. go yeah, yeah. Totally i feel like go. that with the week longs too i keep trying to i keep trying to get my family to do it they come with me and yeah. they they mooch off of my hotel but they don't do the retreat they're like they went all over they went to key west when we were in marco island in january and when we were in san diego they were like doing like the seal watching tours and everything and you know i'm playing in the quantum and they're playing with you know ocean wildlife <laughs> So but Sarah, I, you've been to like well, you've been to a week long and um weekend been, retreats. I was I was at two. I didn't do any of the weekend retreats. I okay. did the um intensive and progressive courses last year, the beginning of last year. Um, but I did I did uh Marco Island in January and it completely mm-hmm. destroyed my life. Like everything mm-hmm. completely like my job situation changed. I had to yeah. literally like my life was obliterated and then San Diego started to bring everything back together. And that's when I knew that I wanted to pursue this channel, pursue art, everything that I thought I would never, ever, ever be successful at. Like I just launched my Etsy, um, the beginning of this week and, you know, I don't have very many products because I'm, I'm literally drowning right now because I've got so much to do, but I know that this is where my focus needs to be right now. I know that this is what I'm supposed to do and I'm just going to keep aggressively going after it, you know, until I eventually make it and then do it on a larger scale. Awesome. Um, And you're doing it so well. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's great. Like you've been to two retreats and, and it's like you said for the first one, Sometimes even in my life, after I've come, even from a week, week weekend long, I feel like some things are falling apart, right? And so yeah. sometimes things have to fall apart for them to fall back into oh, your place, 100%. right? So and then you have to be okay with that, right? Like yes. um, just just after I came back from retreat, I'd recently switched job before going to retreat, and after like coming back from retreat, I quit that job I'm like no this is not an energy match for me yeah right? no so and I'm like oh some like things are actually falling apart and you know you'll have people in your life you know yes. some people will yep. um, you know just don't want to they don't resonate with you anymore right nope. so um, so those things are also important we, we we our limited mind can actually kind of get into a space where it perceives it to be you know not working in our favor again but yeah. it's not it's actually they have to fall fall apart for for you to be the person that you are they do and you need you need that energy you need to call that energy back like the person who's been draining you your coworker your boss that's been draining yeah. you you've got to call that energy back so then you can create the life that you want and it sucks like i I'm, I'm recently i have a friend of mine who just stopped talking to me out of nowhere and we were like pretty close and i'm like i don't know what happened But at the same time, I'm not taking it personally. If they want to communicate with me what's wrong and what I, what I did to offend them Mm -hmm. or something, I'm totally open to it. I'll have the conversation. I'm also no longer chasing anybody. I'm not going after and chasing anything. It's coming to me. I'm putting out that vibration of what people literally are falling into my lap that are supposed to be in my life. And I love it. You know, I trust it too. And that's how it's supposed to be. Like, you don't have to, you just have to be the the true authentic version you know that you are and whoever resonates with that will actually put in the effort to like be in your life and you know if things and people are like you know not resonating with that then it's not worth it's not worth um you know wasting your time and their time somebody else could serve them better exactly and I especially now as things are picking up my time is less and less like I feel bad because I there's emails that I haven't been able to answer because I just don't have the time and those who are who are willing to be with me and work with me and can meet me where I'm at and understand that I might not be able to talk to them every single day that's awesome but those who need more attention like I'm sorry Mm -hmm. I yeah. can't give that to you. And if you're not okay with it, then, Hey, close this bank account out, put it on pause and, you know, go, go find another bank account. <laughs> yeah. And that's true. And also like how you send them off and the energy that you carry, right. That's yeah. important. You send them off 
okay, like your, your, you know, art paths have changed or you, you have, you know, some other things to learn through different cha- other channels. Um, yeah. But I'm sending you off with love and, you know, wish you 100%. all the best. So that energy just frees you. Like it cuts that cord, you know, otherwise if you're still like, you know, in that shame and guilt and um, anger and, you know, frustration, like with them yeah. in that space, then you still have a cord with them and you're yes. basically depleting your energy, right? Where you yeah. could be using that energy to serve others right so yeah exactly so now as we kind of wrap this up a little bit I've got two more two more things I want to I want to um talk with you about the first one is I would like for you to explain that cake analogy that you explained at the before we hit record I loved that so much so Mm -hmm. if you wouldn't mind just resharing that again yeah, I was just talking about how we have um, expectations of others, like, you know, that people will do certain things for us or behave in certain ways. And, you know, that makes us, you know, feel happy or um, we feel that we're worth, you know, something. Um, I feel like I was giving you cake an analogy as to like, you have to bake a good cake yourself and let other people like how they show up and their love and you know compassion and everything as the icing on the cake right so but like imagine if you just have icing you just have everybody responding to you the ways that you want but you don't have a good cake you which means you don't have self-love for yourself you don't have compassion for yourself you don't think you're worth it you don't think you're worth the love that you're receiving from other people how is that going to pan out right so like but if you bake a good cake yourself you, it will even, you, it will taste better even without icing, right? So yes. the cherries and icing and yes. everything. Um, <laughs> yes, it, it's a bonus. But I mean, if you bake a good one yourself, I mean, you can enjoy that, you know? I love that. I just, I've never heard it put that way before, but it gives such a great visual because you can yeah. tell when people bake things with love, like you can, it's so like, it's, it can go unsaid. You could be like, wow, if someone really loves what they do yeah. versus yeah. something that's like mass produced or yeah. and it go, your, your quality of ingredients. When you have yeah. fresh ingredients, when you put it into a cake, it tastes awesome compared to like subpar stuff because because there's energy right even like vegetables and fruits and everything if you eat them fresh because there's energy to like even plants and trees and every fruits right there's energy like we're all made of energy and you know when a human being is you know in the kitchen making those ingredients and all that and or baking like there is that energy that they're putting in like you know energy of love and you know yeah all that so it's definitely going to come across as you know something yeah awesome all right and my last thing here so I would like for you to close your eyes for me and take a deep breath and as you do that I would like for you to connect to your heart and then connect to your future and then when you're ready I would like for you to open your eyes and tell me who it is that you just became and who is looking through your eyes. I feel like today, the person that I was like, let's say even 10 years ago, I'm a totally different person. I would like if somebody would have told me what I will be in 10 years, like if I would believe in these things in the universe and like the people that I've met and all that, it's just fascinating to me, you know? So in the future, what the, you know, the change, I, I just want to be of service. I actually want to help people, you know, in, in ways that I can. I do feel that I have a purpose, you know, to yeah. spread love and being kind and, you know, just helping people maneuver through like different difficulties in life. And so I want to be of service and, and I don't see that changing, you know, in the future. Um, I think with time, of course, I'm going to come across more experiences, you know, learn from others and learn from my own life and, you know, keep changing, you know, and vibrating at a higher frequency and keep changing those neural pathways, you know, where it's yeah. um, capable of even bringing a bigger change in life. So that's where I see, you know, just helping people, um, serving, you know, others in ways that I can. Um, by showing up my authentic version and sometimes it's just like you don't have to like say it you just have to like live a, um, you know live a th- an authentic way for, for people to actually see you and be like look at that person how comfortable mm-hmm. they are who they are, like they are with themselves and like yeah. how they show up you know when they're with people and how and you can just learn from them right like 
So yeah. just just be of service. Nice. So you could say that you are you essentially are a student of wisdom. For sure. That's For awesome. Sure. I love that. Awesome. Yeah. This was such a great conversation. And I'm so thankful that you took the time to be able to speak with me. I know that this is going to help so many people and inspire so many people too. Yeah. And friend, if you wish to come on the show and talk with me as well, send me an email at heytherfriendyt at gmail.com. And I definitely think that you and I are in Veer should do a follow-up like in a couple of months or something, because this was just such a great conversation. And I would love to catch up with you and know more on, you know, what it is that you have learned. And of course, as soon as you go to a week long, like totally, as soon as you get home, I, I want an email saying, Hey, when I, can I come on and share my experiences? <laughs> For sure. I'm all in. Awesome. Well, sending you all, everybody who's listening to this and yourself, lots of love, you know, Thank keep, you. keep showing up and, you know, we, we can do it together. We can bring the, the change. We can. Oh, I absolutely love that, man. And now, now what I say at the very end is it's like subpar compared to that. That was really good. So with that being said, friend, just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend. I will, I will keep singing. Thank you, Sarah.